Pima County Regional Wastewater Reclamation Department is responsible for the operation and maintenance of the wastewater systems that serve Pima County. The department's mission is to protect the public health, safety, and environment by providing quality service, environmental stewardship, and renewable resources. The department processes millions of gallons of wastewater every day that comes from homes, businesses, and other sources from across Pima County. The network of pipes that transports the sewage to our treatment plants is known as the Wastewater Conveyance System. It covers 370 square miles and serves Tucson, Oro Valley, Marana, Salarita, and outlying areas. Pima County Regional Wastewater Reclamation Department facilities treat raw sewage to produce reclaim or reuse water. In this video, we will focus on the Trace Rios Wastewater Reclamation Facility in Tucson, the largest wastewater treatment plant in Pima County. The Trace Rios facility can handle flows of up to 50 million gallons per day, and on a typical day processes about 30 million gallons of wastewater. We will look at the systems and processes that turn the raw sewage that arrives at Trace Rios into the socially beneficial products that the plant provides to the community. My name is Arturo Nersagray, plant manager, Tres Rios Water Reclamation Facility. Uh, what I have here is I'm going to demonstrate uh, what comes into the plant. So this is what we call raw influent after it's been uh, after it goes through preliminary treatment, which means it gets the screenings removed and any grit removal, which are inorganics, which we do not want in the plant. So this is a uh, raw influent. We measure this for the strength uh, and also for the uh, total suspended solids, the TSS. So you can see this is what enters the plant again after it goes through preliminary screening. So we measure the organic strength, which is the biochemical oxygen demand that it places on the plant. We also measure it for uh, the TSS value, which is total suspended solids. Uh, it's in the process, uh, depending on the flow to the plant, probably about anywhere from six to 10 hours, depending on how much flow will come to the plant. We're, a, we're rated for 50 MGD, and currently we're doing about 34 million gallons a day. That's what MGD is. Um, so again, we sample this, we do a 24 hour composite, so we have to measure the difference as it enters the plant and when it exits the plant. So here is our, we are actually in the final uh, sample building, building 54 Tres Rios, and this is where our final effluent is tested every day that we meet compliance. So this is the final product that we put out to the river. So we, we our permit uh, asks us for the parameters of removal. So the TSS value that is removed from this facility is about 99.2%. We have to meet 85% uh, removal. So this is what measured in the plant. This is what measures out the plant. We also have the BOD that is measured, which is also over 99% removal. Uh, we also measure the pH and the dissolved oxygen that it goes to the uh, receiving water, which is the Santa Cruz River. And we also measure the pH in it. Uh, and uh, the turbidity, the clearness of the water. Uh, so as you see, this is the in, this is the out. Uh, this is to the level of uh, what we call A plus reclaimed water. It also meets the nitrogen nutrient removal, which we have to meet in our permit, which is under 10 and uh, eight parts per million. Uh, last month's sample was at uh, 1.2 uh, parts per million on the nitrogen. So the water that goes out to the receiving stream, the Santa Cruz River, meets all the permit parameters that uh, are, uh, that, uh, the compliance parameters that are put upon us through our permits. The preliminary treatment stage begins when raw influent or sewer water enters our facility through the influent channel. This is where various materials are removed from the incoming wastewater. This could include large pieces of wood or rock, toys, smaller materials like grit or any manner of things that can enter the sewer system. We use coarse and fine bar screens, a wash press, grit washers, grit classifiers, and grit basins to remove these materials from the influent. Here at Trust Reels, we can utilize up to four screw pumps. Each one's capable of handling up to 30 million gallons per day of wastewater. It's important to remove large objects uh, and abrasive materials from the wastewater in order to prevent damage for, to our pumps and all of our equipment here at the plant. 
Scrubbers remove unpleasant odors from the raw influence so that the Trace Rios plant can operate as inoffensively as possible to the local community. The next stage is primary treatment, where primary clarifiers remove large amounts of solids through settling. The combined volume of all primary clarifiers is approximately 4 million gallons. Throughout the treatment process, our goal is to remove solids from liquids. You can quantify the large amount of solids removed by the primary clarifiers by looking at our lab data. These solids sink to form primary sludge on the bottom of the clarifiers. This sludge is then pumped to the gravity thickeners where the solids are further separated out by settling. Next, we enter the secondary treatment phase. The liquid portion leaves the primary clarifiers as primary effluent. This effluent is then treated in the bioreactors. This area has a capacity of about 12 million gallons. The bioreactors contain large quantities of helpful bacteria. We're standing on one of our biological nutrient removal systems. Currently, there's about 12 million gallons of wastewater flowing beneath us. The bacteria in this system will convert the ammonia in wastewater into nitrates and nitrites. This happens in the parts of the tank that have aeration and is known as nitrification. Further, the bacteria will convert the nitrates and nitrites into nitrogen gas. This happens in the parts of the tank without aeration and is known as denitrification. That nitrogen gas is simply released into the atmosphere. As our atmosphere is 78% nitrogen, this works out just fine. Through a variety of other biological processes, the bacterial biomass also has the ability to remove phosphorus from the wastewater. Phosphorus, ammonia, nitrites, and nitrates are nutrients. If you've ever noticed the labeling on a bag of fertilizer, you'll see the ratios of nitrogen and phosphorus listed. We have these same nutrients in wastewater. We must remove these nutrients from wastewater to protect the environment. If nutrients are discharged into the environment, it would result in groundwater contamination, pollution, and fish kills. Using a large bacterial biomass to remove nutrients from wastewater is a commonly used technique in the wastewater treatment industry. This biological nutrient removal is both safe and cost effective. Wastewater treatment by chemical addition and filtration would be environmentally irresponsible and very expensive. As the liquid moves through the biological nutrient removal basins, the bacteria populations increase and the nutrients decrease. By the end of this process, the bacteria have effectively converted the nutrients into more bacteria. We are left with a liquid which contains large clumps comprised of solids and bacteria. This solution is called Mixed Liquor Suspended Solids, or MLSS. Interspersed amongst and attached to these clumps of matter are single-celled animals of various types. These creatures will be settled out along with the solids and bacteria. These are the same types of organisms that you would find in aquatic environments, like ponds and lakes. When the liquid from the bioreactors enters the secondary clarifiers, the velocity slows and the solids settle to the bottom. Here we have mixed liquor suspended solids from the bioreactor. This demonstration will give us an idea of how quickly the solids settle in the secondary clarifiers. After the biological nutrient removal basins, the liquid is collected in large tanks called secondary clarifiers. The solids settle to the bottom and the clear liquid effluent is carried over the top. Changing our focus to the solid streams, we see that the settled solids in the secondary clarifiers are returned to the beginning of the process. This is known as return activated sludge or RAS. This allows us to continue the biological nutrient removal process without interruption. We are simply moving the bacterial biomass back to the beginning of the biological nutrient removal basins. Some of the solids in the secondary clarifiers are removed from the system. These solids are known as waste activated sludge or WAS. After thickening in the gravity belt thickeners, 
we send these solids to the anaerobic digesters. Solids from the primary clarifiers earlier in the process are also thickened and sent to the digesters. In the anaerobic digesters, anaerobic bacteria act upon the primary sludge and waste activated sludge to convert the organic solids into carbon dioxide, methane, water, and soluble substances. Part of the methane gas we produce in our digesters is used here in our boilers. The savings is significant. We save about $170,000 a year by using this renewable resource. After a minimum detention time of 15 days in the anaerobic digesters, stabilized sludge is pumped to the centrifuge building. These centrifuges thicken up the digested feed sludge to 6 to 7 percent solids. This sludge is then taken away and used as fertilizer for non-food crops such as cotton. Looking once again at the liquid stream coming from the secondary clarifiers, the water being removed from the secondary clarifiers is dramatically cleaner than when it arrived. But it still requires further processing. It now flows to the chlorine contact basins for disinfection. We disinfect our effluent using sodium hypochlorite, also known as bleach, but a stronger concentration than you would find in your household products. When disinfection is complete, sodium bisulfite is added to remove the chlorine, leaving clean water. Plant operators carefully monitor the resulting clean water to ensure that it complies with permit requirements. The water we produce is also used as reclaim water. The majority of the water we produce here at the Trace Rios Water Reclamation Facility is used to sustain an effluent-dependent riparian habitat. Reclaim water is produced by other plants here in the county. The Agua Nueva Water Reclamation Facility also provides reuse water to the city of Tucson. The city of Tucson then distributes this reclaim water. The Pima County Regional Wastewater Reclamation Department helps protect the environment for this and future generations by transforming wastewater into clean water and biosolids that can safely be released back into the ecosystem. To further reduce energy use, the department also uses solar power. Treating wastewater is an energy intensive operation. At Trace Rios, we use about 2.7 million kilowatt hours of electricity per month. Roughly 6% of that energy comes from solar power. Plant processes and equipment are remotely coordinated by staff in the Operations Control Center, or OCC. Here at the Pima County Operations Control Center, we are able to monitor all plant processes throughout Pima County and communicate detailed information to the managers as needed. The Trace Rios Wastewater Reclamation Facility recently underwent a significant upgrade that has improved process efficiency, system capacity, and effluent quality. I'm John Sherlock, the Deputy Director of Treatment for the Pima County Regional Wastewater Reclamation Department. Our recent upgrades mean we can more effectively and efficiently treat the millions of gallons of wastewater that arrive here each day. Our continuous improvements have resulted in better efficiency for the ratepayer and a reduced impact on the environment. Since our upgrade, we're seeing better water clarity, reduced odors, and higher oxygen levels in the Santa Cruz. Without our high quality effluent, there wouldn't be any water in the Santa Cruz. The addition of our effluent means greater biodiversity and a more aesthetically pleasing habitat. Our regional wastewater reclamation team is made up of chemists, mechanics, operators, biologists, and engineers, all working together to provide excellent service and high quality reclaim water. The Trace Rios Wastewater Reclamation Facility takes wastewater from Tucson and the surrounding area and converts it into biosolids that fertilize local non-food crops, and high quality reclaim water for various local uses. The Trace Rios Wastewater Reclamation Facility promotes the public health, biodiversity, and sustainability of our desert community.